This is Dave at Active Intel Investigations. Our next segment in our series on corporate fraud gets into specific steps on preventing fraud or identifying fraud in your company. First thing is to do a review of statements and not just your P&L statement. Look at the individual accounts, look at bank statements, look even at sales statements presented by salespeople, maybe vendor statements, any kind of statements you have, you wanna review those and review the accounts. Also balance sheets, that's another area where uh, losses and theft can be shifted from a financial statement to a balance sheet to hide that theft. What are you looking for on these statements? Here's the top five or six things to look for. First of all, look for exponential growth in one account. Yeah, if you're growing your company, you're gonna have a growth in different expenses. You're gonna have a growth in different line items. But if that growth is exponential, that could indicate a person expanding the level of their fraud because fraudsters can't ever stop. They get too greedy. If they can steal this much one month, they'll steal twice as much the next month and four times as much the next month. They won't grow the same way your company does. Losses grow exponentially. Also look at changes in percent of revenue. So if you have a line item account on your P&L, let's say it's for advertising. If your sales are gonna go up and your revenue goes up, yeah, your advertising will probably go up. But if the percentage of revenue jumps too much, you wanna look for the reason. Maybe it's a valid business reason, but even discovering that will be valuable intel for your company. Then you can use what's called Benford's Law. Benford's Law is a, um, a procedure where if you look at the first digit of every number on any statement, a P&L, a bank statement, it shouldn't be an equal distribution of ones, twos, and threes, and fours. The number one should appear much more frequently than the number eight. So if you need help with that, you can contact us and we'll help you how to uh, help you run Benford's Law on your statements. Also look at the vendor percentage of expenses. So if a particular vendor was a percent of your overall expenses and that percentage goes up, it could be that that vendor maybe is overbilling, maybe there's something going on with that vendor, it may just be that you're shifting more of your purchasing to that vendor, that may also be valuable intel. On a physical level, look for abnormal interactions. Uh, are there unusual phone calls? Is there mail that's coming in that's, that shouldn't be coming in? One of the areas where we've discovered fraud is when checks are returned from a payee that doesn't recognize where the check came from. Sometimes if there's a fraud, the check gets mailed to the wrong place or it doesn't have an account number on it. We had a bookkeeper who was stealing by sending out checks from the company to pay her personal credit card. Well, she forgot to put her credit card number on the bottom of the check. The credit card company got it. The bank said, we don't know what this goes for. They mailed it back. That company never discovered it that way. They gave it to the bookkeeper to fix it. She just wrote her number on it and sent it back. If they had noted that abnormal interaction, they might have caught the fraud two years before it cost them another million dollars in losses. Companies don't get checks back in the mail usually. That's an abnormal interaction. That could be things from banks, insurance statements, insurance policies, anything that's abnormal, you wanna note that. Also, look at the volume of transactions that are just under audit thresholds. If you have a threshold of let's say $10,000 on an account before it's audited, if you have a large volume of transactions just under that threshold, you might wanna look at those. Also, audit new vendors after their first 60 days. If you bring in a new vendor, wait 60 days, let them generate some activity, and then look at that activity to see if it's all legitimate. Give them a little bit of time to, to uh, prove themselves as good or bad. And the last thing is, look at your deposits. Not only the amount, but also the form of the deposits. One of the, the methods a fraudster will use is to take cash deposits to come in and pocket the cash and replace it with some other form of deposit, maybe a refund, maybe an inventory credit. So the amounts always are the same because they're afraid of being audited on the amounts, but look at the form of the deposits to make sure they're actually in line with the way your company does business.